Glaucoma, raised intraocular pressure. Welcome to Talking With Docs, I'm Dr. Brad Weening. And I'm Dr. Paul Zalzo. And I'm Dr. Rajiv Binlish, I'm an ophthalmologist at Oakville and a glaucoma specialist. Okay, who better to talk about glaucoma? So what exactly is glaucoma, Raj? So glaucoma is a group of disorders where the optic nerve, the optic nerve is basically a computer cable that connects the eye back to the brain. It gets damaged, and it gets damaged in a characteristic way that leads to loss of your peripheral vision. One of the biggest risk factors for glaucoma is elevated intraocular pressure. But just because your eye pressure is elevated does not mean you have glaucoma. Oh, okay. It's a question of pressure. Really and normal eye pressure is? So the normal range for eye pressure is roughly between 10 and 22. It's slightly skewed toward the higher uh, number. Uh, and usually as your pressure increases as we get older, that increases the risk for getting glaucoma. So put that in perspective, 10 to 22 millimeters of mercury is the unit we use to measure that. Um, your blood pressure is 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury. So really a small percentage of your actual blood pressure is what the eye pressure should be. And the main issue within the eye is that we're constantly making food inside of our eye, but it slowly leaks out, gets reabsorbed by the rest of our body. But if that little pathway out of our eye gets blocked essentially, or is in, inefficient, then the fluid accumulates inside of our eye? That is correct. So generally in glaucoma, there's two types. There's an open angle glaucoma and a closed angle. The eye is like a closed bathtub. It's got a faucet and a drain. What comes in through the faucet exits through the drain to keep the eye in a steady state. For some reason in glaucoma, that drain either gets blocked or if it doesn't get blocked, it just stops to, it starts uh, functioning improperly and the fluid cannot exit the eye and that causes the elevated eye pressure. What if you watch a sad movie and just cry? <laughs> Will that help? Yeah, that's just more the surface of the eye, okay. so that's not gonna make a difference. Not gonna make a difference. So, okay, so someone that is starting to have increased intraocular pressure or early signs of glaucoma, what are they gonna feel and what are they gonna be talking to their doctor about? So for the majority of glaucoma, it is an asymptomatic condition. We call it the silent thief. So it can rob you of your vision and you don't know that it's there. Many times glaucoma is picked up on a routine eye exam. So you're just going in to get your glasses updated or you might just say, hey, the world's a little bit blurry. And we diagnose the glaucoma based on the eye pressure and the look of your optic nerve and that may need to further testing. So would the suspicions sometimes come from that little puff air exam? I know it's not as sensitive as yeah. some of the other tests, but so the puff, air puff is just a, a screening uh, maneuver that some uh, people do to get a baseline of the eye pressure. It is unfortunately not very accurate, but it is a, a good first step to possibly flag. But unfortunately, the, a, a lot of people fall out of the limits of the, of the air puff. So okay. basically you gotta look at the nerve. To you have see to look going. at the nerve and you have to have formal visual field testing. Wow, okay. so. Uh, you may be asymptomatic and it's picked up routinely or you may start to lose some of your peripheral vision and that's what brings you in and you're going to get in and get an eye exam. Yeah, the diagnosis so, is going to be? So majority of the time uh, glaucoma is picked up by an optometrist because that's where people would normally go for their routine eye checkup and then you get sent on to an ophthalmologist. With us we examine your eye, we check your vision, we check your eye pressure. We look for something called an afferent pupillary defect to see if there is some early damage of the optic nerve. We examine the optic nerve, usually take a picture, do a test called an OCT, which is a, a fancy x-ray in the back of the eye, and then we do a peripheral vision check with a visual field. Putting all that information together, we can diagnose you as either having uh, early glaucoma, moderate glaucoma, or advanced glaucoma. But getting your eye checked is the most important. Okay, okay. so you got your eye checked, you've received the unfortunate news that you have glaucoma, is there hope for you? So the majority of glaucoma is controllable. Unfortunately, there is no cure for glaucoma, but very, very few people actually lose their vision from glaucoma. The earlier you get diagnosed and the faster you go on treatment, the less likely you are to lose your vision. The more compliant you are with treatment, the less likely you are to lose your vision. Unfortunately, it is a silent condition, so some people do present quite late in the disease course. We do have a number of treatments for glaucoma, including eye drops, including laser, and including surgery treatments. Okay, so would the majority of people start with the drops? So say you come in, your pressure say 25. Yeah, so you mean the, the treatment for glaucoma is lowering intraocular pressure, even if it's not elevated. And uh, up until about two or three years ago, our, our first line treatment was generally an eye drop, and generally it was a once a day eye drop that you would use and it would control eye pressure, we would be looking for about a 30% reduction. 
Okay. Uh, about three years ago, a new study came out looking at laser treatment as a first line treatment for lowering eye pressure. And it was found to be equivalent or sometimes even better than using eye drops. So for the open angle glaucoma suspects, we sometimes now we're going to first line laser treatment. What does the laser do? Oh. Yeah. So what the laser does is essentially cleaning or rejuvenating that, that drain of the eye that's not working all that well. And by rejuvenating it, uh, it, the drain opens up and allows for lowering the eye pressure. And this way you don't have to be as uh, worried about remembering to use the eye drops. Right, so compliance is a non-issue all of a sudden. Compliance is the biggest issue with glaucoma because A, you don't realize you're having a problem, so you're less likely to want to use these medications. And the eye drops do have side effects, including eye redness, skin discoloration, burning, itching, and that can be quite bothersome to some people. I'll say, yeah. So the laser then has sort of over the last three years become more popular as a first line as treatment. First line treatment. It hasn't replaced eye drops, but it is certainly a viable option. Is it in conjunction with? Do you still do eye drops after laser? Some people will need both treatments. Yeah, eye drops plus laser. But I mean, traditionally we used to do laser uh, later on. So we'd start with an eye drop, then switch to another eye drop, then start a second eye drop, then do laser. Now typically we're doing laser first, then starting an eye drop or after starting the eye drop, we will supplement and that with laser. And success rate for the laser? Success rate, again, any success rate with any of the treatments in glaucoma is about 80 to 90%. So just because we prescribe you a medication doesn't mean it's gonna be 100% successful. And in the people that it works in, is it like a once and done or it's every three years or every five years? So the problem with eye drops is they're chronic, they're every day for the rest of your life. It's right. not like an antibiotic that you take for 10 days or 14 days and it cures the problem. Over time, people's glaucoma will worsen. It right. usually worsens very slowly, and you will need multiple treatments. So not only is the treatment important, but the follow-up care for glaucoma is important. So you need to come back for follow-up visits. Okay. Okay. And then now you've tried the drops, you tried the laser, you're in the unfortunate 20% that it's not successful. What's the deal with surgery? So there are a number of surgical options now available for glaucoma. 20 years ago, we had two. One was a trabeculectomy, the other was a tube shunt. Nowadays, we have a, a, a large class of surgeries called uh, MIGS, so minimally invasive glaucoma surgery. We generally combine it with cataract surgery. And what we do is we do something to the internal drain of the eye through our cataract incision to help promote uh, pressure lowering. MIGS, like Top Gun. Kind of like Top Gun, yeah. It is. Very nice. Okay, it so is. a variety of surgical options, success rate of surgery. Again, success rate of surgery is in the realm of about 80 to 90%. Even our tried tested trabeculectomy is 80% success rate at five years. Straight A's for the ophthalmologists. Yeah, that's a pretty good success rate. And we all, whenever we talk about surgical intervention, we always talk about risks and complications. Are there any risks with the surgical intervention? So any surgery will always have a risk. And what are the risks? Number one, the surgery may not work and the eye pressure stays up. Sometimes the pressure, the surgery works too well and your eye does not tolerate, believe it or not, a too low an eye pressure. Huh. And that can be an issue. Always with certain surgeries, there's risk for infection, there's risk for bleeding, and unfortunately blindness. But the risks are very low, under 1%. Okay, that's pretty good. That is an awesome summary of glaucoma. I feel better educated already. Yeah, I thank can see you very much. much. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. And remember, you are in charge of your own health and in charge of going to get your eyes checked for glaucoma. And thanks to Dr. Binlish for joining us today. We'll see you thank next you. time. Have a nice day.